Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name's Phil. I'm one of the uh, Land Rover Jaguar technicians here at Opus. Um, uh, so uh, I think I've uh, talked to a few of you on the chat. Um, if you have any questions, please put them in, in the chat. Um, the, I have pre-recorded this, uh, this section. Uh, so yeah, if you, anyone has any questions, uh, please uh, just write them in and I will try and answer them live. There'll also be a chance for me to answer any questions uh, vocally uh, at the end. Um, so if you have any questions at the end and we can go back over any slides that um, you may have any questions on. Okay. Um, so yeah, this is me. I'm Phil. Uh, questions are turned on. So again, if you have any chats, uh, if you have any uh, any questions, please ask. Um, and away we go. Um, so So these are the uh, the topics that we will be going through um, on this on this webinar. Um, so what is SCR? Selective catalytic reduction. Uh, the principles of operation. Um, components. Um, trying to diagnose the system uh, and the common issues that we see. So what is SCR? So selective catalytic reduction. Um, or add blue. This is a uh, this is to reduce the emissions coming out of the vehicle, um, and it's done by um, adding adding this fluid to the uh, the exhaust. Um, so it's an after gas treatment. Um, this will allow um, the emissions to be minimised whilst also maintaining um, vehicle performance. So uh, they, they so that we're concentrating less about how how the engine's burning the fuel and more concentrating on uh, the uh, about how to treat what's coming what's coming out of the engine. Um, why do we have it? Uh, this is so um, this is so we're keeping in line with uh, Euro six emissions. Um, as we all know, world's heating up. Uh, this will. Uh, and uh, governments are coming under increased um, uh, pressure by uh, every people uh, to um, to re help reduce the emissions that, uh, that each country is producing. And this is um, the UK, Europe's answer to uh, to the car industry and how to keep their emissions uh, their emissions lower. Um, so Ab Blue is the brand name. Um, it's uh, it's a it's, a, it's part deionized water, part urea, um, and when injected into the exhaust, it produces ammonia, um, which uh, which helps uh, separate, which helps um, which helps bring this uh, this NOx level that uh, that the engines that these diesel engines are producing. Okay, so um, his so uh, what what happens is a uh, uh, we've, we've got the, uh, the we've got the injector um, SCR or the, so the the def fluid is uh, or diesel exhaust fluid is injected um, go through these little mixing plates and into this SCR cat um, and all this all this is in aid of is to produce a chemical reaction to uh, get this NOx level down. Um, here's a little bit of an animation. Hopefully, it should run. So here you see uh, exhaust gas going through this oxidization catalyst, um, which gets rid of um, hydrocarbons and it burns off um, other gases. Here we have it mixing the these the NOx mixing with the um, with the DEF fluid, going through this SCR cat slash particulate filter, and then hopefully coming out as nitrogen, CO2, and water. Um,
Okay, so how does the system work? So obviously we've got our knocks coming out of the uh, out of the engine. Um, we're seeing uh, we're then it's in going into going in. At, sorry to repeat myself, but uh, yeah, we have knocks coming out of the engine, mixing with the uh, blue, um, which is uh, which is now ammonia instead of urea. Um, it's mixing. Uh, it's, it's mixing in with the SCR cat, coming out as nitrogen and water and carbon dioxide. Uh, it's all done by this by a chemical reaction, and this chemical reaction is quite important. Uh, is it's quite important that the um, conditions are correct for this to happen. So the exhaust needs to be a certain temperature. Um, the, the we need the correct amount of our blue to uh, to ratio with the uh, with the exhaust gases. Um, uh, the only the only two systems we've got monitoring uh, this whole chemical reaction is one we've got a temperature sensor, so that's where number number one is, and number five is our post NOx uh, our post cat NOx sensor. Um, obviously, we have uh, so some North America spec um, uh, sensors with with our um, our pre. Uh, knock sensor and our soot sensor. Um, we can ignore those for the UK market um, because uh, uh, our market doesn't require it. The US is a little bit more stricter than uh, the UK. Um, so again, uh, to reiterate, so this chemical reaction happening in your exhaust, uh, very reliant on temperature um, to get the right burn. Um, and uh, a good mix is, very ne is also necessary. So the, the, the uh, the, the death fluid and the exhaust gas have to mix really well, um, which is why we have the mixing plates and why it's getting forced together in this kind of honeycomb inside that, um, that SCR catalytic converter. Um, so components. Uh, here we've got uh, a, a, a quite extensive component list. You'll notice we've got the, I've also put the North American spec um, uh, a, a post post knock sensor, po, uh, pre pre knock sensor, post soot sensor on there as well. We can just ignore those. Um, uh, so number one is our diesel oxide, oxidization catalyst, which gets rid of our hydrocarbons. Um, the catalyzed DPF, which gets rid of most of the um, most of the diesel particulates. Uh, number three is our, is, our, is our heater control. So we need that because um, uh, the death fluid being mainly water, so 67% water, um, uh, has, a, has a fairly high uh, freezing temperature. So any, any temperatures below zero uh, will cause the, uh, can cause the death fluid to, uh, to freeze. So we need this heater unit just to heat up to make sure nothing freezes inside that tank. We don't really need to worry too much about the pipes because after each drive cycle, uh, when the engine's off, the pump inside the tank pulls up the uh, the fluid from the pipes. So if you ever remove the the, the pipe off the uh, def injector, you may find that you don't normally get any uh, any fluid coming out. This is because the pump has uh, has siphoned all the fuel all the uh, the def fluid out of the tank out of the uh, pipes. Uh, so number four obviously is our is our def tank. Um, so uh, it's very important not to overfill these because the what the def uh, tank has is, is the sensor inside. So uh, the level sensor is not your typical um, uh, fuel uh, fuel sensor with a float. This has got an ultrasonic sensor in it, and if uh, if what, what this ultrasonic sensor relies on is an air gap inside the top of the tank. So it bounces off these ultrasonic waves off the top of the tank and then reads, um, then counts the amount of time it takes to get to the level of the, uh, the fluid. So if it's, uh, so if there's no, no air gap in the tank, it will just give you, it, it won't realize there was any fluid in there and it will just give you a zero reading. Uh, so, uh, and then this sticks your light on. Uh, so number five is our module, which incorporates the um, the, the the pump, the sensor. Um, it also can, uh, has some protective uh, chambers inside there to um, for the pump and uh, for mainly for the pump. So if the fluid does freeze, uh, it's got room for expansion inside. 
Uh, number six is our post knock sensor module. So um, between the engine control module, the knock sensor and the uh, def tank module, they're all on a private CAN network. Um, also the heater as well. So maybe number 16, you can see the green lines. Uh, they've got a private CAN network, so they can all have, um, uh, they can all talk to each other. Also, it reduces um, the amount of wiring required uh, to go back to the PCM. Uh, number six, uh, number sorry, number seven, um, post uh, sensor, post SCR module. Obviously, don't have that. Um, uh, the uh, so number eight, the um, knock sensor. Though this works in a very similar way to a typical O2 sensor, where it's uh, is measuring. Um, it's measuring oxygen in. It is measuring oxygen in the exhaust gas, um, and it will deter and via the uh, its module it will determine the the amount of NOx coming out of the that SCR cat uh, sending a message back to the PCM which will either adjust the adjust the air blue um, might try and get the uh, the exhaust temperature up a bit higher um, uh, or yes or there's maybe something else to um, try and co uh, try and convince the um, the NOx levels to go down. To go down, if it can't do that, um, it will stick your your mill light on. Um, or if it obviously if it reads any uh, any issues, um, it will stick the mill light on. So uh, number, so where were we? Number ten is our SCR catalytic converter. Um, it's got a honeycomb inside. Again, this just promotes uh, better mixing um, and helps get that chemical reaction. Uh, to uh, convert the NOx into um, nitrogen, oxygen. And then if I just move my picture, hopefully I can do that. Oh, okay. Um, so 13 is our pre-SCR um, pre temperature sensor. Um, we do have this on our, on our cars. Um, the, uh, the, the, the injector will not start firing death fluid into the exhaust until the exhaust has reached at least 170 to 180 degrees. Uh, this is because the chemical reaction just won't work um, un until it's reached this temperature. Um, then we've got number 15, um, Fifth, uh, sorry, 14 is our pre-NOx uh, sensor, which uh, again is only North America. Uh, 15 is our PCM, which controls the whole system. And then 16 is our private CAM, which I've already spoken about. So um, I think that's about everything. Uh, we'll go on to our next slide. OK, so diagnosing the system. OK, so um, my, my experience of, uh, of, of diagnosing uh, these cars, we used to you, you, you get one of three messages pop up on the dashboard, or well, maybe one of four. Um, one is uh, uh, no engine restarts possible, um, do you, and fill the. Ex uh, they, they will all come up with um, uh, the first stage, so you'll get a, an orange orange triangle, um, and you'll no restarts possible in 500 miles or 850 kilometres. Uh, and one will either say uh, fill diesel exhaust tank. Uh, one will say incorrect dizzy exhaust fluid, and the third will say um, a dosing malfunction. Um, so these are these are fairly important to uh, to to realise because all of them will bring up your P2BAE and P2BAF uh, fault codes. Um, even bef even before I read the fault codes, if I was to get, so. Um, Let's let's uh, let's suggest the uh, vehicle's coming to the workshop and it's got this countdown on it. Um, first thing I'd even think about doing is checking the level anyway, um, because because even if the quality's low, the the, quali the custom may have overfilled the car, which would give which may give you a uh, a quality fault. Uh, well maybe a quality fault, um, or it could give you a dosing malfunction because it either thinks the tank's empty. Um, or, or it's, uh, or, or it thinks the, um, or maybe your customers uh, filled it up with screen wash, and which might give you a quality fault. So um, just checking the level will, will give you a, an indication of um, has the system been played with before you've even got to the car. 
Um, so the the two fault codes that I mentioned uh, and are on the screen now, P2BAE, um, that's the first one. This monitors um, and shows the first level of the, the driver inducement um, level. Um, so for example, the def, uh, the, so the NOx um, is low coming out of the exhaust. Uh, and then the P2BAF, this will, this, this is uh, just saying that that triangle, that warning has come on the dashboard. That, that's all they mean. So once the NOx level is low, and the second is the inducement system has, has started. So you may get P2BAE without P2BAF, but um, you'll always get P2BAF with P2BAE. Um, so if the customer has gone through um, all, all, the, all the warning, they've driven it for 500 miles and completely ignored it, they will get this um, message on the dashboard saying, no restarts possible, please, uh, please fill the exhaust tank, or it, might, it will say um, dosing malfunction or quality fault. Um, and if this happens, you will need to carry out a um, AdBlue uh, start inhibit reset, um, which we do have. Again, this is not a fault on the vehicle. This is generally a fault with the that the customer has uh, has produced by um, not not one not putting any air blue in their tank or ignoring any warning they have. So um, the ve the vehicle will drive well beyond uh, this light coming on, but if it will give you no restarts available, um, and so if they if you turn the car off once this uh, light has come on. Uh, you will then no longer be able to read the vehicle. Um, you know, no, sorry, no longer be able to start the vehicle. And this is a requirement of the Euro 6 emissions legislation um, to uh, prevent anyone tampering with the Air Blue system. Um, okay, so I mentioned uh, first, first of all, to check the level. Um, second of all, um, we do see a lot of blocked injectors. So if the level's okay, uh, and uh, and you've you've got no no other obvious uh, no obvious engine lights, so no air leaks, uh, uh, no temperature sensors has gone, um, no other no other DTCs on the system, which is really common on these. They, they will they will fire up the P2BA light P2BAF light with no other indication of any other fault. Um, a good place to start is your is your def injector. Uh, now, these are all pictures of, of, of good injectors, so it's quite difficult to um, spot, uh, spot what is a good one and what is a bad one, but believe me, the, if, you, if you see a, a, an injector that's blocked, it is completely caked, so that, um, that, that cone is completely full of crystallization, which is, is caused by the urea in the, uh, in the NOx. Um, uh, so, if, uh, if this is blocked, obviously the injector can't vaporize um, the, the DEF fluid properly, which uh, won't allow anything to mix with the, which won't allow anything to mix with the exhaust gas. Um, they, they should kind of self, they should self clean. Um, so once, it, once the engine gets to a certain temperature, um, it should clear out. But if it gets um, too caked in this crystallization, um, you will, you, it will either need to be just clean off with a bit of deionized water, um, uh, which should be should be should be sufficient. Um, we do have other pro issues with the injectors, so they do kind of, they do, they may leak. So um, this crystallization may be an indication that the uh, that the injector is leaking, um, in which case you'll need a replacement. Um, or it may be, or it may be blocked, which may it might get blocked, which may be mean it's it's completely clear. Um, or so there's uh, there's three pinholes. So if one of them's blocked, um, that that can cause issues. Um, we'd look for a, a, maybe a pattern um, uh, on the um, uh, or, uh, like a you might have to look for a spray pattern um, using a, a, a cup and a, a cup and a, a, a bit of paper towel in the bottom of it. Um, if you do, and if you remove the injector, the uh, best practice is to replace the clamp as well. Um, to the uh, part number for the clamp is uh, LR06697. Uh, um, 
Another one we've seen is the wiring to the uh, the DEF injector. Also, um, there was a, a product recall or a service action um, to uh, lengthen this uh, lengthen this wire. So, uh, if you see, you may see some um, uh, dodgy crimps or something like that. That maybe they've been corroded, um, or the uh, or the pins have been pulled out of the plug if the uh, the recall hasn't been done. Okay. Um, Another common fault. So, if you get the um, the NOx, uh, so if uh, if we get the um, uh, the quality monitoring uh, message, you may see a fault code of P2BA9, which is a uh, NOx exceeded a uh, NOx has exceeded uh, the uh, what we want it to be. Um, so, as I probably said, may have said before. Uh, the urea inside uh, the, the DEF fluid is 32.5%. Uh, the way you can find this out is by a, um, a refractometer or a relative density tester. So very similar to how you test um, coolant, um, coolant levels in, in, your, in your engine. Um, again, so with the relative density tester, you'd see a the, the, the ball should float at the, at the right level. And the refractometer, um, you look through the site and you should see the line in the at 32 and a half percent. We have seen um, we have seen uh, some poor quality ad blues going into um, into engines. Um, and uh, yeah, so this these are these are great tools to uh, to actually find the, find the issue. So that would probably be either the second or third thing I do, depending on what light has come on. Um, is to just check the quality. Um, we have seen instances where customers have put uh, coolant, um, ad blue, not coolant or um, a screen wash in their ad blue tank or even uh, uh, diesel. Um, another, another weird one um, into into the def into the def tank. So you you never really know what's in there until you do drain some out. Okay. So, um, right. So the uh, other other things that um, I have, before I go into our, our service functions, um, other things I've seen on on these vehicles are the um, uh, air leaks in the exhaust. So if any kind of air is uh, is getting into the exhaust uh, pre the SCR, that's going to have an effect on our chemical reaction going in, um, which uh, we're, um, which will have an effect on how much NOx is going to come out. Um, so even a smoke tester is quite a good tool to have. So we, we probably bang on about smoke testing um, on the inlet side. Now we're going to start banging on about it on the exhaust side as well, because um, the amount of, uh, because um, yeah, we just we're just seeing a lot of these faults. Um, the system is very stupid in the respects of it's only got one sensor measuring anything coming. It's only got one sensor measuring the whole um, the whole process. So there's no there's no pressure sensor for the pump. Um, it's calculated via the uh, via the, the DEF tank module. Um, so there's no way of uh, there's no real way of um, of telling what the exact pressure of the uh, the DEF fluid at the injector is. Um, there's no way of telling what the spray pattern's like unless you, you take it out and do a special routine. Um, there's a whole heap of uh, so there's no re so this one sensor measuring everything is, is quite difficult um, uh, to to actually to diagnose what's going on in the system because it just brings up these two uh, fault codes which don't even represent a fault on the car. Um, so if you do get those two fault codes, the P2BA, P2BAF. They don't erase um, traditionally with with your code reader. They need to, you you need to um, you need to do a couple of resets, which I'll go into later, or do a drive cycle. And this drive yeah, so the drive cycle uh, so the PCM needs to see a clean drive cycle, uh, and the NOx sense and the NOx level has been reduced. Um, Anyway, so uh, these are the functions that we have on the Autologic. Uh, so first thing uh, I'd normally do is the level check, as I, as I mentioned earlier. Um, this is pretty, fairly self-explanatory. It tells you the level. Um, 
and then uh, depending on what fault code you might have to drain the whole tank if you've got a quality issue uh, or maybe just top it up if it's low or drain a little bit out if it's uh, if it's too high which it, it, it will tell you generally unless it's really brimmed uh, the next one is our prime and pressure test. So if you replace anything on the system um, or you might find the or if you suspect the injector might be leaking, you can do a prime and pressure test. And uh, and this will uh, this will you'll have the engine running. It will um, it will uh, it will prime the whole um, the whole pipe. It will not fire the injector. Um, and it will you basically look underneath and check for leaks. Um, really that simple and you should run that anytime you replace anything even from the tank to from the tank to the pump to the injector uh, next one we have is the uh, selective catalytic reduction start inhibit so uh, this one this routine is performed when anyone has ever driven over the 500 mile limit um, and uh, and uh, this this will restart the counter. If there's a fault on the vehicle that hasn't the the, the PCM hasn't recognised that it's been rectified, um, it will only give you 30 miles. If it was just um, completely out of blue, out of our blue, and you've topped it up now, uh, it might it might clear the it might clear the countdown totally. Um, next one is reset selective uh, catalytic quality, quality monitoring. Um, again, this should be uh, reset once um, any kind of quality uh, malfunction has occurred. So again, if um, if, uh, if any uh, any so if you've had an air leak in the exhaust, if uh, if the uh, if the spray pattern and the injector's been poor, um, anything that um, that has brought the P2BA P2BA fault codes on. Um, this uh, this co this um, light might need to be reset if you can't um, uh, if you if you can't take it out on a long enough road test um, you you can reset this and uh, and then just monitor the monitor the uh, the SCR um, uh, uh, system you can yeah, monitor the SCR system in um, uh, to, to get rid of those two fault codes and then go on a clean drive cycle, which is where the neck, which is where our, the last one it comes in. Um, the reset SCR dosing adaptation factors. Um, again, that's a good reset if you've uh, if you've replaced the SCR cat. Um, the SCR cat has a the ability to um, store ammonia in it. So if the PCM thinks there's a certain amount of ammonia stored in the SCR. Um, this will reset that uh, reset that adaptation, uh, and then last one is the SCR quality, uh, the SCR monitoring application. So we run this um, we run this routine when we've ever when we do a repair or we're not quite sure what's wrong with the car, and the uh, and the the quality monitoring isn't resetting at all. So this will tell us our our pressure. Um, again, it's calculated, um, and this will this will only show you a ready, not ready. Um, the knock sensor, if it's active, so again, there's a heater element similar to your, 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 your O2 sensor. Um, the operational mode of the engine, um, the storage, storage, um, the ammonia storage act is active. It will just go inactive or active. Um, the stored ammonia. Um, it will go in range. Um, it only needs like 2.5, I think, uh, maybe even 1.5 to, to be in range, and the and the SCR temperature. Uh, the SCR system will not function properly if the DPF is regenning, uh, mainly due to the uh, the temperature sensor uh, will go sky high, and the, so the chemical reaction that we're looking for in the SCR cap. Um, it'll go over the 300 degree mark, and uh, so the best thing to do is let the DPF do its regen, uh, reset the um, uh, reset the, uh, the 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 drive cycle, and start again. It may take about 20 minutes of driving to get everything ready. Um, what I would do then: uh, drive for another seven or eight minutes, cycle the ignition, then drive again um, if your if your lights are staying on. 
Um, the injector will only start firing after when the car's above 10 miles an hour and the um, and the uh, the SCR is between about 205 and 300 and 300 degrees uh, centigrade. Um, so they're, they're a good key thing. So if the driver's only doing kind of like really short journeys and maybe doing two miles an hour, this might give you a a, a knock sense uh, and you might give you an issue with your knock system as well. Um, it's best practice to do this with this sensing, uh, this monitoring application with two people as well, just so you're not distracted by a by a big screen in front of you when you when you're driving. Okay, I think the uh, video has uh, stopped there. Um, not really sure why. Um, I can just go back to the slides. Uh, I will just go back to the slides um, and see if I can find the right one. So bear with me. Okay, so I think what I was trying to say is uh, the the system the the system prioritizes a DPF regen. So if we are getting an issue with our DPF, um, or if we if we're getting an issue with our um, the SCR system temperature, uh, we need to wait for the DPF to finish its regen. Um, I think that was all I was about to say on that, and I was going to go to the, our next slide, which is. Um, uh, what the what our fault code, what inducement system is. So inducement basically means to um, persuade or lead um, an operator to do something. Um, this will uh, the um, so what we've got here is a, is a little kind of key. I don't know if you guys want to do a screenshot. Um, I can just disc uh, take my uh, video off for a second so you can just see the um, the, the last part of the uh, the bottom of it so if anyone i don't know if you can take a screenshot or maybe pause it and you can have a read through this um uh, on, on yourselves rather than me just reading out everything um again it's just to reiterate that p2b p2bf don't represent a malfunction they are just uh, only to help stand, you understand what the uh, what level of inducement the vehicle is currently in um and what is no what is technically a malfunction and what technically isn't um, okay so does um anyone have any any questions um yeah could the web, okay so could the Okay, so yes, the, uh, the 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 webinar will be available on YouTube later, um, and we can uh, we can email you anything that you may. Uh, you may um, yeah, so uh, I'm not sure if uh, um, if Nicole will uh, will email will uh, email you a, a a link to this uh, to the um, to the YouTube, um, but it will be on the Opus IVS uh, channel. Okay, I'll just give you a bit of time to type out anything if you have any questions. Okay, so Alex has seen cracked uh, SCR catalysts. Uh, does it not sense to have a separate module? Yes, it does. Um, I think I did mention it does have a separate module. All the all the all the knock sensors, even on the US spec cars, um, uh, have have a separate module. This is literally just to keep the wiring uh, down. Um, does overfilling always cause an issue? Um, in my experience, yes. Uh, it will just bring on the P2BA, P2BAF fault codes. Um, okay. Uh, 
Okay. Um, any any other any other questions? Um, well, I hope I've uh, I've I've answered all your questions, um, and uh, and you and you and you guys have enjoyed the video and learned a lot. Um, I will. Uh, uh, I will. Uh, I'm sure I will talk to you um, a lot on you know, most of you on the log. Okay. Oh, sorry. One more question. Um, testing knock sensor other than power, ground, and signal at the module. Um, is there any possibilities of testing a suspected fault? Um, if we get a fault on the sensor, um, the you'll, you'll get a fault code. So if any, if there are any issues with either the heater element or a power and ground issue. Um, uh, you you you'll you'll get a fault code. Um, so there's no uh, even on SDD the dealer tools. There was no um, there was no way of actually uh, having a look at any dynamics that the injectors were doing, uh, as far as I can remember. So um, other than testing the the power and ground to the to the module, you can you may even be able to test the um, the heater element uh, circuit. Uh, but other than other than that, um, you 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 just have to follow the fault codes. I'm afraid. Okay, um, guys, thanks for listening. Um, it's been a it's been a real like kind of learning curve for me uh, doing this. Um, uh, I'm really happy that guys, you, if you enjoyed it, um, uh, yeah, thank you, thank you very much for listening. <laughs>